So the major system is uh, one of the the most useful memory systems and uh, the idea behind it is that uh, it's easier to remember images, uh, even easier to remember words than remembering long sequences of numbers. Uh, And it was invented by a guy, uh, a French mathematician, about 400 years ago. Uh, He wanted to memorize pi and he found it difficult so he invented a system uh, which made it possible to convert all of these digits into sort of a long poem. Um, which then could be converted back into the digits. So then he learned this poem, and then by converting it back, he could then recite hundreds of decimals of pi. Uh, and today, uh, we're often using this uh, system to, to convert the, the numbers into images instead, so yeah, rather than poems. And uh, when you're using, using this technique, you can actually memorize thousands of digits without it being especially hard, uh, simply by convert, converting them into images. And you can also use the system to, to come up with a, a bigger peg system, uh, like to, to create an image for every two digit number, for example, and then you have 100 pegs and can easily remember a list of 100 objects uh, without much effort. So uh, this is a very powerful technique and, and it's used by almost all of the the memory experts around the world. So the only thing that you have to learn to be able to use the major system is a table where every digit corresponds to one or more consonant sounds. Uh, So for example, zero corresponds to the s sound or the z sound. Uh, One corresponds to the t sound or the d sound. Uh, Two corresponds to n, three to m, etc. So you just learn this table uh, and it's, it's only consonant sounds, so then you can use all the vowels uh, and also H, W or Y, uh, which aren't included in, in this table, uh, and put these, these vowels and these other consonants uh, before or after or in between these consonant sounds to create words uh, that you can later imagine as pictures. Uh, so for example, um, uh, 5, uh, 8, 2, 1 uh, would be um, 5 corresponds to, to L, uh, 8 corresponds to F, 2 corresponds to N, and uh, 1 corresponds to T, so that could be elephant if you if you put vowels around it. And then instead of, of remembering the, this big uh, four-digit number, you just have to remember an elephant. Uh, and then you can, c- can do this for, for lots of sequences of digits and just attach these images to whatever it is that you want to memorize instead of the numbers. And that makes it a lot easier and also quite fun as well. When, when you want to memorize the, this table, uh, that is the media system, then, uh, well, the, there's not so much information, so you could actually just try to, to memorize it uh, the normal way. Uh, you can also use uh, small techniques, like, like thinking that zero, for example, uh, corresponds to S and Z because it, it begins with, with the sound Z. Uh, one corresponds to T and D because both T and D has, a, has one vertical line in them. Uh, 2 and n, uh, n has got two vertical lines and m has got sort of three vertical lines. <clears throat> 4 ends with the r sound, uh, 5 corresponds to l, so l uh, that is uh, 50 uh, with Roman uh, Roman numbers, uh, so that could, could not remember that 5 should be l, etc. So, so you can come up with small rules for why, why it is as, as it is and that might help you uh, memorize this table a little bit quicker. Now, but we'll start with uh, a simple system instead for for coming up with images and words for more than one digit. Uh, And this system, uh, it's it's very famous, uh, like if you study memory, it's very famous, and it's called the major system. Uh, And it's based on this table in which every every digit uh, corresponds to one or more consonant sounds. So you just learn this table. So, So zero, for example, corresponds to the s sound or the z sound. Um, or the soft C, but that's yeah, the same sounds. It's, it's the sounds that matter here. And uh, one corresponds to T or D or th. Uh, and if, if there are more than one sound uh, assigned to a particular uh, digit, then it's, uh, it's because these sounds are like, sort of in the same place in the mouth. Like if you say T, D, you notice that you, you use the same, like you put your tongue in the, in the same way. Uh, and it's really the same sound, but with and without tone. So it's the same with P, B and f, v. Uh, so you just learn this table. Um, maybe it takes you 20 minutes to, to learn it sort of well. Uh, and then you can use these sounds uh, together with vowels. Uh, since then there's no vowels in here, you can just put vowels around these sounds and inside and outside of them uh, to, to create words. Uh, and most, yeah, the best thing is then if you uh, create words that you can see as images later. 
so yeah, we, we'll do some examples. Uh, so we have, yeah, we have these, these numbers. So we start with a 4. Uh, and then you just check which, which uh, sound it corresponds to. And if you, if you learn the table, you all, of course, know it already. Uh, but look here, 4, that corresponds to R, so the R sound. And then you can put vowels before or after or in between, yeah, not in between this one, but before or after uh, or on both sides of the R uh, to create a word. And you can also use uh, H and W because they, they're not also, they doesn't correspond to, to uh, a digit. So W, uh, H and also Y and all the vowels can be used together with R sound to create a word. Any idea of some word that could be created? Say it again. Row? Uh, okay, you don't know, but, but row is actually a word that could be, <laughs> could be created. Uh, so yeah, yeah, it might be, yeah, I'll give you some examples for, for the first one. So row, uh, or war, uh, or hair, uh, or or, uh, air, like, like any, anything where you just use uh, vowels, uh, W, H, and y, y, together with, with this sound, and then in the right order. Uh, so yeah, so hair could be a, like a simple thing you could also you could also see. So you can remember hair instead of four. Of course, if you only have one digit, then you might just as well remember the digit. But when you have more digits, it's, it can be really useful to, to convert them into words. So if we, we look at uh, 74, uh, 7, that corresponds to k or g. So k or g, that sound. And uh, yeah, 4 still corresponds to r. So k, r, and then balls. Say it. Car, yeah, that's a very nice image. You can just see a car instead of 70, 74. Uh, something else? Cry, yeah, exactly, yeah, that's the nice. So yeah, so like in the beginning, of course, it's difficult and you have to, to check the table all the time and, and to try to come up with this. But once you, you learn the table and, and you, you have it like naturally, then you can just very quickly create words out of, out of long sequences of numbers. Uh, so that's really nice. So car or, or uh, cry, or it could be crow as well, uh, or core. Uh, yeah, that's great. And then uh, three, one, four. Now this is a little bit more difficult, but then you just check it again. Three, this corresponds to M, mm, and then one to T or D, and then or th, and then R again. So M, T, R. Mother, exactly. That's nice. So if you want to remember the, the beginning of pi, you can just think of your mother. Uh, or you can think of a, a meteor or a metro or yeah, anything like that. And then we have this last one, and I don't expect you to, to come up with something for this, uh, but I'll just give it as an, as an example. Um, like, yeah, if you probably, you probably want to divide this into smaller groups. So if you start with uh, seven, six, that would be uh, g, sh, so that could be gosh, you just think they're saying gosh. And then um, uh, nine, two, that's p and n, so that could be a piano. And then zero three zero that's uh, s m mm, s so that could be uh, sims like the sims if you you know you know the game yeah uh, so then you you might um, picture that you're you're sitting you're playing sims uh, you're playing the Australian version of the sims and then you you notice that you you can actually learn to play the piano in the game and you didn't know this uh, so you're saying gosh I didn't know that I could play piano in the sims. Uh, and if you do this, you actually uh, memorize the, uh, the surface area of uh, Australia in the square kilometers. Uh, so you might now say that, gosh, I didn't know that a piano in The Sims could teach me the surface area of Australia. Uh, so that's yeah, 7,692,030 square kilometers. So now you know that as well. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> This is, of course, the thing that you, yeah, you have to learn this table, and then you, you can convert sequences of numbers into uh, words and, and images. Uh, but then you also have to be able to do it the other way around. That's actually uh, easier. Uh, because then, if you have a word uh, and want to, to convert it back into, Im into numbers, uh, you start by just uh, ignoring all of the vowels, uh, all of the vowels or W or, or Y or H. And then you, you look at what sounds you have left, and then just convert them according to the table into numbers. So pen would be which number? Exactly, 92, because P corresponds to 9 and N corresponds to 2. And drone would be? Yeah, exactly, 142. Uh, so yeah, so D, that's 1, and R is 4, and N is 2 again. So 142. And spaghetti? Yeah, exactly, yeah. 
I, he I hear that a lot of you are saying uh, uh, 09711, and it's almost correct. Uh, but one thing to have in mind uh, using the system is that it's it's only the sounds that matter. So if it's if it's uh, yeah like two T's as if here, uh, then it's still only one t sound. Uh, so you only count it as, as one. So yeah, uh, like of course you could choose to count it the other way, but it's it makes it easier. Uh, so that would be zero nine seven one. All right, I think that you're ready for actually using this uh, on some things. Um, yeah, so you won't have to, to memorize the, the table. I will have it here on the side. Uh, but I wonder, I'm going to ask you some questions, and I wonder if you can answer them uh, using some of the information that you might have memorized earlier uh, and uh, this table. And if you know the answer to these questions before, then you uh, don't answer it. But if you, uh, yeah, if you know it by using yeah, what you just learned and this table, then please answer it. Uh, so the first question is, which year uh, during the, the 1900s uh, did the Russians or the Soviet uh, get Sputnik up? So we're looking for two digits. 57, exactly. Uh, you probably all remember Luke, uh, Luke Skauke, and that's Luke, that's L, K, that is 5, L, and K, 7. So that's 57. So now you know that, okay, great. Uh, so let's see, uh, another question. Uh, which year uh, in the 1900s uh, did Elvis Presley die? Exactly. 77. So that's uh, cookie. So k k 77. Uh, okay, great. Well, you have a lot of, of uh, general knowledge in here. Um, okay, now this is a bit tricky one, uh, I suppose. Um, how many members uh, are there in the Swedish parliament? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, would you like to convert it? <laughs> Yeah, I think there's something we got it. 349. So Marabu, that's M, 3, R, 4, and B, 9. So now you know that as well. Uh, Marabu, 349 members. Uh, and then we have some uh, uh, questions here. Like, uh, I got three questions for you about uh, the Sydney Opera House. Uh, and the first question is, which year in the 1900s did the Opera House uh, open? 73, exactly. Gum, that would be. And uh, how many years did it take to, to, uh, to construct, to, to finish the construction of, uh, of the Opera House? 14. 14, exactly. Ta, 1, 4. And finally, uh, how many million Australian dollars, uh, like counted by, by the time that I made it, uh, did it cost to, to build the Opera House? Yeah. 102 dozen deeds in 102. Great, so you're really good at this. <laughs> um, and then one uh, last control question. What is his name? <laughs> yes! <laughs> well done. <laughs> Thank you.